It's my great honor and pleasure to be here as a speaker and the collaboration between the Serbian Sesnian Society and Croatian Society is a very important for this whole region. Today I will be talking about the novel technique of botulinum toxin injections that have been mentioned previously but by our famous speaker Silvia Tatiana Tapa Patel and my fellow co-author Constantin Frank. So we have the greatest honor to be part of Professor Sebastian Batofana's inner circle of scientists and visionaries and we published some pretty awesome papers for the last several years and they've become really a game changer. We are also very thankful to KOLs of Allergan, Mertz, Restylane and other brands for promoting these papers and uh, contributing to its popularity. So nowadays we all speak about the importance of individual approach to every single patient when it comes to injecting botulinum toxin and when it comes to omitting all the side effects. First reason is that, that there are so many different, uh, so many different um, appearance of the muscle itself, as is stated in the 2020, the, the paper that is published here. So there are so many different patterns of the muscles, that this is the first thing. The second thing, there is so many different insertion of the muscle into the skin. Mimic muscles are the, different, the most different muscles in our whole body because they connect not two bones, but one bones and the skin. So the insertion of the muscle is very important when customizing the, the patient. The second thing is also that for, these are my patients and they gave the permission to take a photo. So you can take a photo afterwards when we inject those patients. So this is one patient of mine. This is second patient of mine. Those two patients are completely different in terms of my um, choosing the, the pathways and the injection sites. They have clinically pretty much similar appearance of the wrinkles, of the forehead wrinkles, somehow really straight, but they are completely different in the length of the forehead, one thing, and the other thing which is very important that we haven't mentioned so far, it is the thickness of the skin. So something that is not related to the muscle, but the thickness of the skin we all will also uh, distinguish the pattern, the, the pathways and the patterns of the botulinum toxin injections. As Celia previously said, the botulinum, the botulinum toxin is not just about the treating wrinkles, but is also the treating of the brow position, myomodulation, thus changing the emotions and the appearance of the patient as well. And this is why somehow patients look strange to us, because we have the brow ptosis, we have the different brow position, because we are not customizing our patient injections. For the last several years, there have been some papers stating that there might be a difference in uh, side effects of botulinum toxin if we inject on the different depths. The first game changer was in 2020 by our mentor, Professor Sebastian Kotofana, when he stated and postulated that there is a line of convergence, the C line, as we like to call it, the Kotofana line. So the, the C line line of convergence will change our perspective that frontalis muscle is not just elevator of the brows. The upper third will lower down the, the line of the, of the hair, the hairline, but the second two thirds will lift up the brows. That is why we continue our investigation and we are very proud of uh, this paper mentioned so many times over the last two years, where we hypothesized that there, the side effect might be omitted if we change the depth of our injection depending, depending on the position of the, of the sea line and where we want to inject. So we designed an interventional splitway study where neuromodulator is injected on one side deep, on the other side, side superficial. So we did the split phase study and we will see what happened when we injected in this case. So we have, in our first uh, paper, we had the, the small group of the patients, 14 patients. Um, just to let you know in a little secret, we are doing the, um, a similar study, but with a larger group of patients, more than 100. So we had some inclusion and exclusion criteria and we took eight injection points for first side. We uh, had the forehead line severity scale, which were measured in the rest and upon the maximal contraction 
on the baseline, on the day 14 and the day 30. We also wanted to go until the day 60 and the day 90, but some of the patients were complaining because of the asymmetries, and that's why we stopped our, our research at the day 30. We have three dependent the, the, um, observers, myself, Kristina Davidovic, and, and uh, the two other, I was also the patient in this study. So it is good to have a, a decent radiologist in the aesthetic team from time to time. So I performed the ultrasound examination on myself. I put the contrast material inside the botulinum toxin. So I injected superficially above the subfrontal is fascia and you see the hyperhygienic echo of my botulinum toxin and beneath the subfrontal fascia, as you can see the hyperhygienic beneath the subfrontal uh, fascia. So, yeah, I, I know that you have been seeing these images for the last three years, so this is me, and if I knew that this picture will be so viral, I would do my eyebrows probably better. So this is uh, before injection at the baseline in my rest and upon my maximal contraction, and this is the uh, forehead line stability score. After 14 days of the injection, we see the, the first picture uh, during the rest, there is no statistical difference between the, the clinical appearance of my forehead lines, but you can see the difference in my brow position on my left and right side. On the other images, of, upon maximal contraction, you can see that there is a high statistical difference between appearance of the, of the forehead lines, but as well as the position of my eyebrows. 30 days later, we have the same situation. No statistical difference in appearance of the line, but high statistical difference upon the maximal contraction. But still, the position of my eyebrows are so different even though there is no statistical difference in lines. But the difference between my open eye look on my left and non-open eye look on my right is statistically uh, different. So upon the rest and upon maximal contraction, so we conclude that the, with these three and previous split phase study, studies, that the effectiveness of forehead, forehead neuromodulator injections depend highly on the depth of the product administration, even though we are injecting the same amount of the, pro, of the, of the product. Treating the forehead on an individual basis and not following the rigid cookbook, so forget about the fine points injections, seven points injections, and so on, we provide a new insight into the functional anatomy of the frontal muscles when describing also the line of verses. If you want just to, to treat the smooth appearance of, of the forehead, we will go superficially and not affecting the whole muscle and the contraction. But on the contrary, a deep injection should be performed when substantial effect on the frontal muscle action is desired. So in my case, how do I inject my, my forehead? Above the line of the convergence, I go deep with the injection, and below the line of the convergence, I go rather with uh, superficial intradermally like papilla injections. Also, my patients, now remember the thickening of the skin, both of them are highly satisfied after the 14 days. Completely different points of injections. Here, I place literally uh, several injection points be up above the sea lines deep and with greater concentration. But in the other patient, when the, the skin is so thin, I go rather than one unit, one and a half units, in so many places in order to omit the artificial appearance of the thin uh, skin. Also, never forget that our neural uh, motor uh, cells are changing as we age and as our patient age very good paper in, uh, published in 2020 uh, with the nine postulates of botulinum toxin injection stating that even I will be uh, differently injected as I age, so I will be different than those points as I will say. So always think about that you will not inject the same patient when they are 35 and when they are 50 years of age. Thank you so much.